Hello, I'm Kathy from House of TOEFL and thank you for joining me today on my journey in the Pacific. Today's lecture will be advanced and it will be about another journey that happened long ago. For the questions and the answer key, please see the description of this video. Now let's begin. Now listen to a lecture in a history class. The early European explorers who first encountered the Polynesians could not believe that a primitive people with only simple sailing canoes and no complex navigational instruments could themselves have discovered and settled the mid-Pacific islands. It was not until the late 18th century, with the coming of Europe's age of exploration, that a viable hypothesis about where the Polynesians came from and how they managed to discover and migrate to their islands began to emerge. The great explorer Captain James Cook was the first to realize and document that a vast region of the Pacific was occupied by people who shared a common cultural base. Cook was also the first European explorer to seriously consider that the Polynesians could have intentionally explored and settled their island world without any aid from other continents. In 1778, he chanced upon Hawaii and its inhabitants and realized that the Polynesian nation extended north of the equator as well as a considerable distance across the South Pacific. The seeds for his theory of Polynesian settlement, one that takes into account the nautical abilities of the Polynesians, can be found in an earlier journal dated to 1769. That year, while on his first voyage into the Pacific, Captain Cook stopped for four months in Tahiti. During his stay in Tahiti, Cook did something remarkable that no previous European explorer to Polynesia had ever done. He learned the basics of their local language, and then he used these skills to ask the islanders how they sailed and navigated their canoes. His primary guide in local nautical matters was Tupa Ia. Tupa Ia was a knowledgeable Tahitian who befriended the expedition. Tupa Ia was able to explain to Cook how the Tahitians sailed their canoes and navigated by using the sun, moon, and stars as a reference, and he gave Cook information about the surrounding islands. Cook was impressed impressed enough to accept that what had been unthinkable to earlier Europeans, that the ancestors of these islands, islands sailed the Pacific on their own and covered this distance in their canoes, were able to orient themselves by observing celestial bodies. Cook theorized they sailed 600 to 900 nautical miles just by using the sun, moon, and the stars and that they employed this to move from island to island all the way from the East Indias to Tahiti. Cook chose the East Indias as the orange origin point for the Polynesian migration because on board he had a linguistics expert named Joseph Banks. Joseph Banks compiled a list of words used on different islands and compared them and he found many similarities between the islands, thus concluding that they came from the same source. Cook did see one obstacle to accepting a Polynesian origin in the islands of Southeast Asia. That was that the migration trail led through tropical latitudes, and in the tropics, easterly trade winds are strong and normally prevail. This would have made it difficult for the sailors to sail west. Tupa Ia again supplied the solution to this apparent dilemma. Tupa Ia told the puzzled cook that during the months of November, December, and January, the trade winds died down and were replaced by long periods of westerly winds, and that the Tahitians used those westerly winds to sail east. From that crucial bit of information, Cook constructed his seaman's explanation for how Polynesia was settled from the west that takes into account the ocean environment and the Polynesian nautical abilities. 
The early voyagers worked their way eastward from the Asian side of the Pacific, moving from island to island by exploiting westerly wind reversals. Beep. So that's the end of the lecture. I'm going to read you the questions, which you will also find in the description for this video. And then if you scroll down a little further, you'll find the answer key. Question one. What is the main topic of this lecture? Question two. Why didn't early Europeans believe the Polynesians could have settled the Pacific Islands themselves? Question three. What did Captain Cook do that no previous explorer had ever done before? Question four. Why does the professor mention Tupa Ia? Question five. Why did Captain Cook choose the East Indias as the point of origin for Polynesian migration? Question six. Why does the professor say this? Tupaia told the puzzled cook that during the months of November, December, and January, the trades frequently died down and were replaced by long periods of westerly winds. Okay, so scroll down for the questions and the answer key. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. This is Kathy from www.houseoftofel. Thank you for joining me today. Good luck on your test.